Hello and welcome to this watercolor painting session. I'm so excited to be working on this misty forest painting with you guys. Um, it's a painting that just looks, it looks so gorgeous when it's, when it's completed and it's very straightforward um, and easy to do. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is grab our masking tape and make sure that our piece of paper is um, secured to the table. Um, so I just have a thin piece of masking tape here and there's about a quarter of an inch overlap on the paper. So as you tape that to the table, we'll go on all four sides, um, make sure you just run your finger along to make sure that it's all adhered. The paper I'm using is an Arches watercolor paper, so there's a bit of texture. Um, so it's very, very important that that seal is nice and tight. Okay, and then out of all the colors in my fall color palette that I've been using, we're only using two colors for this painting. And those two colors are indigo blue and a watercolor I made from the wood plant, which is sort of a, a grayish, greenish blue. It's very subtle and it pairs really well with the, the deep, rich pigment of the indigo. Now we're not going to be sketching anything out for this painting, um, but I did want to talk a little bit about layout um, since we're not going to be sketching anything. Now normally when you start drawing you know, something on the horizon, you the, the gut, I don't know, instinct is to do half, right? Um, divide it in half. The ground is the bottom half and the sky is the above half. What we're going to do is we're going to work in thirds and that's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So we have our third mark on the bottom, third mark on the top. And same for left and right. We have our third mark on the left, third mark on the right. So just kind of eyeball that. It doesn't need to be precise. Um, but as we work on these layers of trees, these misty, misty forest trees, um, we'll be working approximately at those third line marks. So I am using a number six round brush. Um, it's a nice size for my five by seven paper and I'm just dipping it in water and wetting down the paper a bit. Adding some paper, we're gonna use the wet on wet technique. That's wet paper and then of course wet paint on top. And that's gonna give us a really nice flow to the picture. So make sure that that first that, that top third um, is pretty well saturated. And now I'm just adding that woad color to the sky. We're gonna add a little bit of depth to the sky. Again, this is a grayish blue. It's really pretty, it's very subtle, um, but it does add a very earthy, um, moody glow to the sky. So I'm just kind of patting it on there. There doesn't need to be, you know, exact lines or anything um, and I'm going to tap up as it looks like it's getting a little too maybe saturated in some areas. I'm just going to tap it with my cloth, my paper towel, um, and add a little bit of texture there because we don't want to add too much pigment to the sky. The focus, um, let's keep it on the trees. Blue pigment I made myself. All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of my indigo blue I'm keeping it very light and I'm just going to run it in vertical lines along that top right um, third line and this sort of descending, it's a, it's a hill, it's going downwards. So just little taps of my brush. Um, we want the just a hint of trees, a hint of tree line. And as watercolor dries, it will get lighter. So even though we want this to be very faded in the background, um, let's put enough pigment on so when it does dry a little bit lighter, um, you can still see it. Now, if your paper is still wet like mine is, you'll see the paint really spreading, right? That's giving it the mist effect. And I'm adding a little bit of water to the bottom just to kind of soften that line so it's not so harsh underneath. So there will be two lines of watercolor trees. The first is 
in the distance along the top one third to the top right one third to the bottom left one third, if that makes sense. And then the other will be in front of it a little more bold. So I'm just adding a little bit of water here, uh, moving it around. Again, we just don't want any harsh lines to distract from the misty feel. Okay. All right, so I have my second line of indigo running down. I'm gonna add some more of that woad just to blend it in a little bit better with what's going on with this guy. Okay, so I've just washed off my brush with water and now I'm gonna dry it a little bit on my cloth. And the reason for that is the more water you add to the pigment, to the paper, the more unstable your painting becomes. And I have enough pigment here and I really just want to be pulling it up into tree, sort of the merest hint of tree forms. So I'm going to take my clean semi-dry brush, this is that number six round again, just sort of pull it upwards, pushing, pulling, Here. And as you can see, this part's a little bit more dry, so I'm getting more definition here, which is fine. This is a misty painting, so some areas should be more defined. I'm not going to panic. Um, and some will be a little looser. So as I have, now these are the trees, the individual trees. So how we're going to do the pines is just a straight line up. And then with the very, very, very tip of the brush, um, make some vertical stripes here. I'll just add a couple trees here and there where I can tell that it's dry in the background. Take a little bit of that wood again. Just add the smallest hint of trees. And we're just going to sort of fade out here at the last two thirds mark. So I don't really want any definition beyond this point. Clean your brush and dry it off. Okay. So I just had a break to go put the baby back to sleep. Um, a little bit of real life <laughs> going on here behind the scenes. Um, yes, so this picture is actually not completely dry even though I was gone. And you can tell that it's buckling upwards a little bit. Um, actually, I don't know if you can tell, but I can push down on the paper. And that's, that's common if you are working with... Um, watercolors you will have your paper buckle a lot so what I'm going to do since I have I'm not in the middle of painting right now I'm going to pull it up and sort of just press it down as I am re-taping it to the table so notice I left the tape on the paper I'm just going to press it down and outwards a little bit and that's going to take away a little bit of the buckling it's still going to be there um, which is fine. It is not going to ruin our painting by any means. But if you can get out, ah, what have I done? Um, I brushed my fingers in the paint. That was clever. I'm a professional painter. Okay. Um, here I come. So, uh, let's get back to work. I'm going to rewet my brush, got my piece of cloth, tap it, because uh, you never want your brush to be sopping wet. That is going to give you all sorts of headaches. 
um, a damp brush is very good. And let's get to work on this second line of trees because I, I'm happy with how this turned out and here's why I'm happy. It has a little bit of definition here. I can see the trees. I will continue to add more as it continues to dry. Again, it's still damp to the touch. Not so much that paint is coming up when I touch it, um, but I can feel the moisture in the paper. So I'll add just a little bit more water here. And I want the slopes to be different. Up here, it's very gradual and linear. And here I'll just, I'm gonna have, actually, I'll start up here, a little bit more overlap. Sort of almost at that one third mark. And then we'll just have a little bit more variation. So I'm gonna take my indigo here, adding just enough water so it's not a really thick pigment, but it's gonna give me enough to work with. All right, so this tree, now these are nearer, so the trees are gonna be bigger and they're gonna be a little more widely spaced. Just add pigment as needed to get that effect okay as you're working this technique is called wet on wet I don't remember if I mentioned that before but it's wet paper wet paint uh, and it's important if you're working on it with this wet on wet technique is going to be very important that you keep your your paper the the correct consistency right that you're working with the proper amount of water and this is just going to be a trial and error like you have to practice and practice and practice to kind of get the feel of what it looks like you don't want puddles of water on your paper you also don't want so little that it's like here here it's, this is wet on dry this paper is pretty much dry which is why i just did tiny little little outlines i need to add water to it to get the paint to bleed a little better okay so going back to my indigo oops see now there's too much water on the paper the pigment isn't really sticking it's not sending out it's not really doing anything um, so you'll find it's a common problem. Um, again, just just work at it. Find out what you like, what you don't like. Uh, the more water you have on the paper, the lighter your, the bigger the um, color difference when your paint dries. Your paint, you'll find your paint dries to a very very light color, as opposed to if you're painting on relatively dry paper, the color change is not going to be as, as dramatic. Okay, so here I am putting the very top of the tree above where my water line is. My water line is about here with where the paper is wet. And I like that because it gives me the flexibility to do a single straight tree top, get my definition there so you can tell it's a pine tree and then as soon as I hit that water line it just kind of pulls the paint down and gives me that extra bit of mist that I'm really looking for here the water lines higher I'm not putting the trees as far above it so that I can get the the variation in and some trees are very well defined and and others are a little more captured by the mist. And here I'm just gonna tap, tap a little bit because I want more, more pigment, I want more color, I want some shadows, but I don't want those necessarily to be defined into tree form. I just want that the shadows and the mist. So I'll go back over here. And I'm looking for balance at this point. I want to make sure that one half isn't darker than the other half. Okay. Okay. 
and I'm working with the very, very, very tip of my brush. If you wanted this, I like the size six because it does let me do the entire painting without switching brushes, which is my preference. The less tools I have to work with, um, I don't know, the better I like it. It's I can get more into the painting itself. Um, but if you did want to, you could switch to, let me see what other sizes I have. I'm not sure I have all my brushes here. Um, <laughs> do I have any brushes? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, well, take my word for it that you could find a smaller size brush. I do not know where mine are right now. All right, so this is the next line, and I like it. I think it's good. I'm going to do a third line. And that's just going to be the foreground here. Okay, and this foreground, we're going to pull together both colors again. So the first was that that gray, green, blue for the woad. This is my indigo, 100% indigo. And this front one, I want to kind of pull them both together. It will be mostly mostly indigo and the reason for that is just it stands out better <sighs> i don't know if you can hear but there's a full ah what in the world i dropped my brush okay that happens add some water take your cloth and just pull it up um and if your paper is getting too wet where you're like oh i want to be adding more definition just tap it with your clean cloth okay and that's happening here I really need to actually put way too much water on let's dry it off a little bit make sure as you're cleaning off your brush I'm just going to pull off some more of that water because it's clear there we go that's what I'm looking for see how it's bleeding only slightly so it doesn't look like there we go all right I feel good okay so that's what I'm looking for in this one because I really need more definition. And see how I'm staggering the heights of the trees as well? Like if I just did a straight line up and you know, just do, 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 like stairs, it wouldn't look as, it wouldn't have as fluid of a look. Like it, it might be fine and maybe that's the style you're going for. In which case, awesome, go for it. But and we really want for the full effect of this misty forest hill. I want some variation. I want I want this to be an unexpected, like untailored, very rough, rough wilderness. Like picture if you're walking down this these hills, like it's not just like you could not take a sled down. You'd be hitting rocks, you'd be hitting gullies, you'd be hitting other hills. Like this is very, a, ver a variated forest floor. Um, and one of the fun things about making these wilderness landscapes is that, I mean, you're picturing like what's going on beneath the surface, right? Like we've got our, our mist and here I'm adding water, just kind of pulling it down, pulling it around. Let's, let's lose some of that definition. We've got our nice dark pigment. Let's lose some of it. Let's make that get a little more fluid. Okay. Here we go. And I'm going to finish it off right about here. And the reason why is I have a nice little sort of uptick here. The mist flows up. Maybe that's a little gully. Um, maybe there's a river that runs to the bottom of this. I don't know. But I'm going to end it before I get to that one third mark. Okay, because if I actually am probably ending it at the one third mark, this one a little far. This was about the same kind of spread a little wider because you don't want tree end, tree end, tree end. Um, that's too linear. Not, not wilderness enough. Okay, so I'm just adding some water, pull the pigment down. And like I said, I did want to bring in a little bit more of this woad. So let's take our woad. I'm just going to tap it around a little bit. 
disappointed. Well, maybe I'll do. Um, the more defined trees, I'm not going to add it to. Um, I'll leave those defined trees, that indigo. Just add it maybe to a couple of the background, this woad. So this is sort of the shadow, shadow of the indigo. Bring in that variation. And I feel like this is too white, like too much white space. So I'll just add in just a hint of a giant pine tree. Or maybe this is a cliff, like I'm, I'm not sure. Here's our water. Pulling it down, pulling it down. And feel free to leave some of those white marks too. Uh, it add, does add a little bit of the sparkle to your painting. Okay, I've gone a little excessive with adding moisture. I'm gonna run some lines down, bring that diagonal down to the bottom because what I want it, when someone looks at this painting is to just kind of be pulled into it if they look at you know they're, they're pulled down in this angle they're pulled upwards like you want them to kind of get sucked in the the sides are sloping inwards um, and you want them to get really captivated and and pulled in like you don't want to just if I just had say three lines sending them out like you just kind of lose them like oh yeah I look down the hill and now my eyesight's gone um so we're going to just use a couple of these tricks like bring some lines back towards the center and with that in mind I think there's too much white space here so I'll add a tree here add a tree here and there and I'm getting lighter and lighter as I go backwards. Now I want this to get a little darker because there should be no doubt that these are really the trees that are closest to you. No doubt that these are the richest colors. Let's add some more of this pigment while we still have the moisture on the paper, while it's gonna bleed. because we don't wanna do polka dots, right? If this paper dries up, if we lose the, the moisture, we could add more by just adding water to it, but just take advantage of the consistency. And I will add a little bit more of the load right here. And this is the fun part, right? Like there's, just do what you feel looks nice. And the more varied, more variation in what you're doing, the better, the better it'll turn out. Okay. And here, is our pretty little misty forest. Um, I did not end up using, I had these grand ideas for lots of colors. Clearly did not use them. I used two colors. I used my, oops, indigo and my woad. None of those were used. So you only have two colors. Like how fun and how easy is this painting? Um, and if you did want to start adding more colors, like you could add some of these warm browns maybe here and, and make some rocks, some cliffs rising up. You could add in some blacks if you really wanted to deepen the shadows. Um, you know, this, the sky is really the limit. This is a very flexible, flexible painting and I hope you enjoy painting along with me. And it's fun. Oh, but before we go, we gotta do this. This is the best part, honestly, is pulling off the side. This is where you really get get that like ah oh, I just did a painting looks like a real partner okay Oop. there 
it is. Those sharp, crisp edges. So fun. So beautiful. Um, if you do the painting, take me on, on Instagram. Take me on uh, YouTube. Whatever you're sharing it on. I would love to see how yours turns out.